So the next section, we're a little bit over halfway home, so we appreciate you guys sticking with us and asking questions. Um, the session I want to demonstrate now is all about heat printing headwear. Um, so we talk a lot about the flat presses here at Stalls TV and everything you can make and load onto a flat press, but often you need a hat press for the job. And because it has, has the curved plat and it's specifically designed for heat printing headwear, and when you start to add a hat press to the business, in addition to your flat press, you can really uh, decorate all over a cap and reach a lot of new markets. So we're going to walk over to the Hotronics Auto Open Cap Press and talk a little bit about um, headwear options that are out there. And we want to thank um, Auto, who has donated the hats for us today, and they partner with us at various trade shows. So if you're looking for a source for headwear, Auto is a great source, and that's where all of the hats that I'm going to talk about uh, came from. So let's start with the basics when you're heat printing headwear, when you're decorating headwear in general. Um, the flat bill caps are tremendously popular, but as a general hat terminology, you want to understand if you're decorating a five panel hat, uh, which would be this one, or a six panel hat. And so that's specifically with how many uh, sections are actually in uh, the hat for printing. On a six panel hat, you'll have actual six panels that make up the crown of the hat, which means you're going to have to print over top of a seam during your application. Whether it's screen printing, embroidery, heat applied graphics, you're going over a seam. With a five panel cap, you're getting a little bit more of a flat surface on front, so you're getting the look of a seam sort of halfway down the crown, but in your actual print zone, you don't have a seam. For this reason, while heat printing will go directly over the seam, often uh, decorators will look for a five panel cap just as something that's uh, easier to decorate and you're less likely to have any sort of pressure issues. So as a general tip, look for that. Also, when you're looking at the construction of a hat, uh, think about what fabric it's comprised of. It's no different than um, apparel when you're decorating it. Um, ultimately, it's usually not going to be laundered when it's a hat, but it's very important to how heat sensitive it is. So we have a sort of brushed cotton here on this particular hat, whereas on this one we have an 85% acrylic content. When you're dealing with acrylic, you start to have heat sensitivity issues, so you can really uh, get scorching um, onto the hat uh, when you're pressing it. And so for that reason, when you're decorating um, hats with acrylic or polyester content, the same as you would be with heat printing apparel, um, the darker colors are going to tend to give you more issues, like black will show a heat press mark uh, more likely than a light gray like we have here. Um, so you want to take special consideration, like dropping the temperature and sourcing a low temperature uh, transfer to go on that headwear. And so uh, we've already decorated the front of these particular hats, but I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, markets um, for headwear. So if we can come in close to the heat press here. I'm going to start with this particular style. So this is an unstructured cap um, that you're seeing here. Basically what that means um, is it's very soft on the inside. It doesn't what, have what's called a fused buckram that's going to give you that hard stay in the hat that's ultimately going to leave a little bit of a crease when you're heat printing it. So if you can get an unstructured cap, it's going to make your life a lot easier. So we have the Hotronics cap press. Um, we have interchangeable platens. I'm going to load in uh, what's called a low profile platen. And so this one is two and three quarters by six and a half. It just drops right in. And then I'm going to load the hat to press it. So I'm going to flip out the sweatband, position it onto the press, and I'm just going to pull it tight here. And there's a cap hold down device, basically this lever that I'm going to click down. It's going to grab the back of the cap, and it's going to pull it flush and allow me to make any uh, fine adjustments to it. At this point, I want to check the pressure, so I'm just going to lock it down. And yeah, I have a nice, good pressure. If not, the pressure adjustment is directly under the press. There's a little knob here that you can turn to raise or lower the platen, that black knob underneath the press, that will allow you to adjust it. You can apply a wide variety of heat applied films to headwear. I want to show you a popular uh, print technique on these unstructured caps, and that's going to be stretching something from the actual front of the hat down onto the bill. So you'll notice I'm using glitter flake here, and you notice how I trimmed it sort of to the numbers themselves, that'll allow it to sort of push down in there and lay a little nicer. I'm going to position that down, and then basically I'm going to lock the press down against it for my first full application. Now I'm only pressing at 280 degrees. Um, at 280 degrees, Glitter Flake usually calls for 300 to 320, but the reason I'm able to drop it is, as I mentioned, this is not going to be laundered, um, so I can be a little bit more flexible. I know it will adhere at those settings. I'm going to carefully 
remove the hat without trying to disrupt that bend in the application area. And then I'm going to flip it and ultimately get to my bill uh, to complete the remainder of the application. So just supporting the hat, I'm going to heat press onto the bill. And actually, I forgot my additional placement, so it doesn't matter if you heat or reheat this. It'll take one more application because I wanted to drop a second color of glitter onto there. And now after it's been pressed, I can remove it. So just glitter flake hot or cold peel. So you notice how it's stressed straight from the crown of the cap down to the bill. And I'm going to give you a look at that, and then I'm going to press my design that I want to be underneath of it. So this is for 82 Studio. Uh, glitter flake usually shouldn't be layered. But because I'm going to a hat, I'm not that concerned. Once again, it's not going to be laundered. I've trimmed down a piece of craft paper that I can lay over top and complete the application. So basically, you can heat print anywhere on this hat. I can load it on the back. I can print the sides. I can print directly on the bill. Um, the hat press is particularly beneficial uh, for the curved build um, hats that are out there. Um, so you can see the completed result. Make sure you trim your glitter. I got a little scrap on there. While it's still hot, I can remove it and we'll be fine. But you get a nice uh, looking hat um, that's fully complete. Uh, you can add rhinestones. You can do all sorts of applications. So this would be a nice cap that you can pitch out there for fan wear. It's just an unstructured cap. It's a, a great opportunity. Um, and then, you know, of course, there's other opportunities as well. That's a glitter finish here. Um, we can load a visor on um, to the press. Once again, making sure that sweatband is flipped out. Hold down device into place to hold it flush there. You always want to feel to make sure there's not a big pucker in the center of this. There's a little bit of one. Um, I'm not too concerned with that, but if you start to feel that puckering up, you may want to just drop in a smaller platen. So if you buy a hat press, I'd recommend um, that you get different platens. That way when you run into a hat that just doesn't fit quite right, in this case, I'm going to load in the 3x5, give me a little bit less on the width that'll make it lay in there a little nicer. I'm going to press it down just to preheat and check my pressure with the new platen in. And I'm going to position my design down. In this case, we're going to utilize fashion film and press it for the recommended application. Once again, I'm pressing fashion film at 280 degrees, even though it's recommended uh, to be at 320. Difference is, I'm doing a hat. If I were doing a bag, something that's not going to be laundered, I can sort of drop the temp a little bit so it's not impacting those heat sensitive items. Peel the backing, and we have a customized hat. So again, you can rotate it, press the side, uh, press the back band. Um, wherever you'd want to print on the hat, it's all possible. So, Golf Market is another big one. Another opportunity for hats uh, would be like these performance hats. In this case, this would be like a running hat that you could sell for a particular event or a promotion. So in, a, in addition to your typical sports or corporate market, um, there's opportunity for this. So I've uh, created a design that's geared towards like a marathon. And now you'll notice a very small tight print area on this. And so I have our baby hat platen that's going to drop right down in. Same concept, flip the sweatband out. I'm going to work to center that front panel right on the press. Um, make sure I get it cleared of the hold down device so it can work and lock it down. So I've got a nice lock down there. Once again, I'm going to check my pressure. Looking for visibility for the, because this is a running event, so I'm going to put um, some high visibility reflective on here. This is 3M reflective. Just another material cut on a vinyl cutter. Cover it with a cover sheet and press it down. If you see the edge of the platen come in contact with the bill at all, sometimes you want to pull the bill down so you don't get that hard edge of the platen that can sometimes dent a bill, particularly on the sides of like a flat bill. You'll see um, an indent mark. So just a lot of uh, different opportunities. Can rotate this around in addition to the reflective application. I can rotate the hat. I can press, you know, a little guy running here out of fashion film neon on the side. So just a 
lot of opportunities. This is just a basic uh, craft paper that I've trimmed up to size. You can use a Teflon sheet. And Taylor, if you want to come around here, I'll show them exactly what I mean. Typically, this edge of the platen, you notice how it would be hitting the cap and heating it up. I'm just holding that edge down. Or you can always put like a rubber band around the bill on the curved bills. Whoops, got a little bump. You got to watch the auto open of the uh, heat press. Made sure Taylor was up here, but you can see the, uh, you know, a nice clean application on the side on the front, a sellable item. I'd like to switch over to the Fusion heat press. If we can uh, walk over to the Fusion heat press and set our shot there, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, printing flat bills and sort of uh, the camping market and some new styles um, that are out there for outdoor events. So we're over at the uh, Fusion press. I've already loaded my flat bill uh, platen onto the press. Basically, this gives us the opportunity to load uh, three to four flat bill hats at once. And we've shown you the traditional flat bill. Uh, what I want to show you is this auto snap. So this is a new style from AutoCap where it's their flip style. It's a patented style that they have. But basically the idea is that um, the top of this flips up. So you get a really cool style. And this is how um, it's being worn by a lot of the kids and uh, teenagers out there um, in different markets such as skate and surf and streetwear. But we are going to load that on. Preheat it just to check our pressure. And then I've cut a design out of Fashion Film Electric. And you'll notice how we've completed that design where I've inset a piece of text that's going to be designed as part of the uh, flip up portion when it's being worn. And so I'll heat press that down for the recommended application. In this case, the electric takes 15 seconds. Unfortunately, I was at eight, so I'm going to let you listen to that wonderful beep for a second. Open it up and remove the carrier. So now I've completely heat pressed the underbill of that hat. And just to show you how it's to be worn, you sort of flip that bill up. There's a patented design style in it where you get that. Oh, we're going to show it at the main screen there. I never look good in hats, but you get the concept. So you flip it and then you're getting the the wear. Um, and you're getting the saying across the front as well as across the bill of the cap um, where you've printed it. So let's go back to the Fusion. I'm going to show you one more opportunity and then I'll pass it along. And sort of um, out headwear for outdoor camps um, is definitely an opportunity. Um, whether it's your bucket style hats or your uh, military style hats, I'm going to steal my seven inch round platen from the other table. This is another attachment that's available for your heat press. So this one drops right in, locks into place. This is why you have to get one of these fusions or auto clamp heat presses with these interchangeable platens. And now I can take um, a military style cap like you see here, and I can actually load it, and I can print the top of the hat. So I'm going to do a test. Of course, for the front of the cap, I would use the cap press. But if I want to print this for a uh, particular camp, I can drop that right down onto the top and heat apply. The same thing holds true if I wanted to do one of the um, bucket style caps. I can load it and you can get right to that top placement area with the seven inch round platen while printing the front over on your cap press. Simple as press and peel. So hopefully this gives you some ideas on how to heat press different caps. Uh, by adding a cap press or a flat bill or a seven inch round platen, it can certainly be a profitable part of your apparel decorating business. Thanks for watching.